Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and today I've made Diagon Alley which you can probably tell from the title but yeah I felt like it's taken a really long time for me to make this. I made it today but I started at 9 o'clock this morning then I had to get ready for uni about 11, came back about 5, no about 4 so it's 6 o'clock now so it's taken me quite a good couple of hours but because it's been split up I felt like it's taken me all day. But if you've been following me, then you will know that I've been mentioning about making this. I did make the burrow as well, which is also in um, Forgotten Hollow. Is that the name of it? I keep thinking it's called Midnight Hollow. But yes, these are both going to be part of my Plumella save file because I'm remaking every single world in The Sims 4. Yeah, it is inspired by Little Simsy. I feel like I have to say that disclaimer every single time. But yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say for the introduction. If you don't know who I am, I am Plumella. I make Sims videos, obviously, because you're watching this right now. And I'm also really, 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 really obsessed with Harry Potter. Really obsessed. It's my favourite thing in the world. Always has been. I don't know. I think The Sims is a close second, though. Sims might even be first now, actually. But Harry Potter means a lot to me. I've always been obsessed with it as a kid. So I thought it was only fitting to do a Diagon Alley build. This is inspired by the Diagon Alley in Warner Brothers studio two is in um london just outside of london i've been there twice most amazing magical experience of my life i really do recommend it to anyone who can get there i've just remembered it's in watford as well yeah it's it's amazing it's it's breathtaking beautiful like i could cry over it i think i did actually the first time i went but yeah it's inspired by that so it's not so much inspired by the american one i don't know how the american one is but it's just mainly inspired by that one Especially because it's on Google Street View now, so I can literally see it, so it was quite easy to make. Didn't include all of the shops though, I included um, Scribulous, I think that's what it's called, Ollivander's, the Weasley Joke Shop, what else did I include? Um, the Leaky Cauldron as well, I included the Leaky Cauldron, that's not in the Warner Brothers Studios too though, but I did include it, and then I included, um, not the Magical Menagerie, I didn't include that. I included the apothecary, didn't include the robe shop, I included the cauldron shop and I think that's, oh and flourishing blots as well but yeah that's all that I included. Some like the magical menagerie I'd have loved to include that but obviously there's not enough animals and this is also as well loosely, very loosely based off of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for Nintendo GameCube because I used to play that a lot. And one of the tasks was you had to be in Diagon Alley and you had to look for Ginny. I think she'd lost her Remembral or something. So it's kind of inspired by that as well, a little bit. But I also included Gringotts, as you can probably already tell. I included Gringotts. I like it. It's not that usable, Gringotts. It's kind of just one flaw, but you'll be able to see later that I've done a little trick with that. I enjoy it. Also, for the Weasleys, Wizard Wheezes, that's a lot to say. I included this gate and I wasn't sure about it, but I was like, no, I want to use it. And then I just went into the debug bit, found some boxing gloves and then found a baby's head, shut it on top. And I was like, this will do because it's got the, you know, the big robot thing out the front of it. So I wanted to include that because otherwise it's just going to be a building with red windows and they had to use doors as windows also, which you can probably tell. But I think it, I think it works overall. I was quite pleased with it. Because, like I said, otherwise it would have just looked like, you know, a shop with red, red windows. But now it looks more like the Weasley shop. And I think that's pretty much all I've got to say about the build. I'm sure I'll jump in and out again. But if anyone's been keeping up with me, then you know how much I hate my life right now because I'm back at university. And I went to my second seminar of this year. And I don't know. I feel kind of, because I transferred to university, if you don't already know, so I'm in my final year. I don't really have time to adjust. It's kind of just work, work, work. So it's kind of scary. I feel kind of dumb because I had my module today is on the troubles, like the troubles in Northern Ireland and everyone else had already studied it. And then I'm there like, oh, we didn't really study anything outside of the UK and India. But thankfully, I know most people wouldn't appreciate this, but uh, the seminar tutor was like, oh, this is Plumella, she's new. And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> because without that, I, I don't think, without the context of me being you, I don't think people would have understood that, you know, that's why I'm a little bit, like, well, a little bit. That's why I don't talk. <laughs> I talked a little bit. Thankfully, I got sat with a really nice group of people today because we had to do reading for it, for the seminar, because we do history. So we have a lot of reading to do. Um, and we had to go off into groups and she was like, oh, I'll discuss this question with the new groups. 
and I was like oh my god I'm gonna let this group down I don't know anything and I was like oh really sorry guys but you know I haven't done the reading because I, I physically couldn't and and the girl was really nice she just passed me like her reading that she'd printed off and she was like hey just quickly read that and I was like oh thank you so the people are nice but I just I'm done with university I think now that I know that I'm not going to use my history degree it's kind of like I'm only finishing this year to say I finish this year so yeah hopefully it gets better also I'm just going to jump in again about the build there is one bit that might not make sense and it's this like outside bit I don't, I'm not sure if it's up yet but it's this outside bit that I'm doing on what will be the leaky cauldron and I just thought I'd include that as a little easter egg because obviously in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone that's where you know Hagrid goes and taps on the wall because it's like a brick wall and then it moves and it forms a leaky cauldron so I thought that can be a portal back to the muggle world that'll be fun um kind of i'm glad i included some at the topic so i was just gonna leave it as brick but i'm glad that it didn't looking back i could have just done a brick wall that would have made sense but i also you won't be able to see it yet but the upstairs of it i made is a hotel which you know it is a hotel in the books so i thought that that was that was nice um i also included some food stalls it, there is a mod where all the food stalls are free so you can just click it you don't have to hire a vendor if you're on a community lot you don't have to be at you know the festivals to use them so if you're interested in that then google that it should be up on mod the sims i think and also if anyone wants this house to be on the gallery i can make it into a community lot and i can upload it on the gallery for you just let me know comment down below let me know what you're thinking so far also i hope you've liked my introduction machinima kind of thing i'm just getting used to it i'm not the best at it but you know that's my first try so hopefully it's like that and is there anything else I need to say? Oh yeah, yeah there is actually. I had a good day at work the other day, which if any of you have been like at my channel for a while and watching my speed builds and stuff, then you'll know that I hate work, I hate it. But yeah, I actually had a good day because it's very salesy. I work in, I'm not, I don't really want to say the name, but it's like a gadget shop kind of thing. And um you've got to sell stuff to people like as soon as they walk through the door and then once they enter the middle of the store you've got to middle of the store you've got to approach them again and then once they enter the end bit of the store you've got to approach them again so it's very like hectic and I'm not really good at it because I can't talk to people lord knows I try but it's just not something I can do naturally um but yeah I had a good day at work through the day because I feel like what I'm good at is actually being recognized which is good because I'm really good at stock work sorting things out tidying things counting things putting things on the shop floor like i think things that everybody else would find mundane i'm like honestly give it to me i enjoy it so much and um one of my supervisors was actually like oh it's, it's a really good thing that like you know what you're doing and i was like you you think I, you know what i'm doing yeah I mean, no was that right i was shocked that he thought that i knew what i was doing kind of thing because i don't know I've worked in shops before and retail before and I was good at my job before but with this I kind of feel subpar to everybody else. I don't know. I think it's just because of the selling thing but I'm glad that the supervisors that I have on that shift kind of recognise my talents and not, I'm saying talents. It's not like I could, you know, win awards with it or anything. It's just I'm better at, I don't know, being in the stock room than selling stuff to people but it's nice that people actually recognise that and appreciate it instead of just being like oh no you're doing that wrong like you need to be on the shop floor and I'm like I don't it's it's free like no one's in the shop um which thankfully the supervisor that I was with he was fine with it he understood that you know when the shop's dead you don't need three people on the floor <laughs> so it was fun and I hope you can tell in my voice how happy I am with it because I, I don't know it was kind of a hard a time going through this job but I think I've found my feet now and even though I'm not the best at talking to people I still try I might scare them off uh not because I'm aggressive or anything just because it radiates from me that I can't speak to people like I'm talking to the microphone fine now so you probably don't believe me but the microphone is just like an object in front of me but then when I'm faced with strangers I either talk way 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 too much or not enough because I don't know I don't know why I do it like when I first met all my co-workers on the very first shift because we built the shop from the ground up kind of thing um I couldn't stop talking and you know where you're really aware of the fact that you're really talking a lot but you just can't stop and it's just oh that was me on the first shift and then I think the they were really confused by me because that was me on the first ever shift and then 
when it came to, you know, serving people, not serving people, I'm okay on the till, but approaching people, I was just the complete opposite. And I was like, I, I, I can't talk. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully you're happy that I'm happy because I think you can tell, especially if I've had a bad day, then my voiceovers are kind of, oh. and also I'm trying to work on my voice a lot as well because I had like, um, like a mental health team kind of thing that I used to meet up with a lot when I was undergoing like my testing for autism thing. And I remember feeling really offended because on some of the notes, they'd said that my voice was monotone. And I was like, oh, that's, I don't know. It's just not a nice thing. So I'm really trying to make an effort with my voice. But I have been told by people because I was telling my old flatmate about it. And he was like, yeah, to be honest, your, your voice is really monotone because when you're happy, you don't get like higher, you just get louder, which... When he said that, I was like, oh my God, that's true. That's so true. But if anyone wants me to talk about like autism or mental health or bullying or anything like that, or, you know, my experiences with all of it, then comment down below because I think that'll be fun. It'll give us topics for each speed build. And it might help you as well because I know like it helps me. Even the other day, I saw someone's comment on Lil Simsy's channel and she said that she had autism and she'd like mentioned something about having autism and it just made me feel better because I was just like yeah there's people in the world like me because even though I'm really high functioning and most people can't tell it's still like inside my head and I still feel different if you know what I mean like I know that I'm on a different wavelength to everybody else like everyone else is sat down just chilling watching tv and I'm trying to do a cartwheel in the middle of the room or something so yeah, and I think, I don't, I mean, you might feel completely differently, but I think I'd be interested, you know, if someone that I watched talked about stuff because, not because I enjoy it or anything, um, like what I'm about to say, but I really enjoy hearing Lil Simsy's like bullying stories and things, not because I hate her and I enjoy the fact that she gets bullied and I want to listen to it, just because, I don't know, it makes him relatable and it's like everybody's been through, you know, that kind of thing. Everybody's been bullied in some way because I wasn't I'm not really the, I don't want to say like I'm not the type to get bullied as if there's a type but I, like I've only really been bullied for my teeth because he used to have really bad teeth but I haven't really not, like when I say I'm not the type to get bullied I don't mean like there is a literal type of person so don't think that's what I'm trying to say with that it's just I've never really been badly bullied I've just kind of had a rough year with when I was in, I think I was in year eight, so I was like 12 and a group of year 11s, which like 15, 16, I could not walk across the corridor without them shouting stuff at me and it was awful. And then I saw one of them when I was on a night out um, and I went to the toilet in the club and she came in and she tried to start talking to me and I was like, uh, hon, do you not remember like me not being able to walk a corridor? without you like shouting stuff at me and spamming my myspace with sort your teeth out that was myspace is a flashback but like i don't know it was really hard for little like 12 year old me like crying to delete loads of myspace comments because when i say spammed i mean like there was literally about 200 300 comments on each of my photos saying sort your teeth out but anyway, we're at the end of the video now and I've put some pictures up. Hope you enjoy them. I've done a little editing as well. Made a lot of effort with this video, so I hope you enjoy it. If you still don't know who I am, I am Plumbella. I upload every single day at half nine. Used to be three times a day, but obviously I do uni. I have a part-time job and I do YouTube, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube full-time, but without the pay. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.